They yeah. weren't breaking into Nord Stream and gangs of people and stealing stuff. This is all mm -hmm. very new. And it's against, it all happened because of the COVID war. The damage the COVID war has been caused is incalculable. And not only in the United States, particularly in the country that started it on that celebration oh. of the Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat China. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. And financial survival now more than ever. What you're about to hear, kind of shocking, but not surprising. We've got Gerald Salenti on from Trends Journal. Gerald, it's great to have you back. We were talking pre-call how your area north of the city by, I guess, about 60, 70 miles of uh, basically the last person who leaves New York City who's a citizen should turn off the lights, right? Yeah. No, it's a whole different New York City. Again, you look at the data. Go to Castle Systems with a K. You know, your occupancy rate in the top 10 cities in America is 49% occupancy. Your vacancy rate is over 20%. Vacant. Vacant buildings. Mm. So... You look also, you go to the city, you know, I'm a, you know, guy, you know, grew up in the Bronx and, you know, right. grew in the Bronx, grew up in Yonkers, you know, I'm a city guy, you know, lived in the city. Same it's here. It's a whole different place. It's a, um, uh, your, your <laughs> foot traffic in New York City, again, the data, hard data is down over 33%. So now all the businesses that depended on commuters are going out of business. The shoemakers, the hairstylists, the restaurants, all that boom after the COVID thing, it's all dying now. People can't afford the prices and it's a whole different vibe. So they're moving up here. A lot of people with, they see kids in carriages, you know, strollers that, that never saw before. A lot of young people between the ages, mid twenties to late thirties, flooding out of the city because the nightlife is gone. Crime's on the rise, ain't a great place to be. And this is happening around the country. So now let's go to what no one is talking about in the major media. And if they do talk about it, it comes and goes really quick that we've been warning about now since they launched the COVID war on Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat, 2020 January. Office building bust. How are the owners of these buildings going to pay their mortgages? Yeah. They're not. They're already defaulting on them. You're going to see a banking bust that no one in the major media is talking about, that we have warned about now for going on for three years. There's about $1.2 trillion worth of commercial loans coming up. They're not going to be able to pay them. People, why, if, I'm a tenant, if I'm a tenant in a building and the people don't want to come back to work because what happened was when the clowns made people stay, you can't go to work, get back in your house. People are now saying to themselves, as they're staying home week after week, month after month, year after year, holy Christ, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning to commute an hour and a half each way. What am I out of my mind doing this? I'm not doing it anymore. Oh, and by the way, it was costing me a lot of dough to do this. I'm not going to do it anymore. Thousands of dollars a month. I used to That's spend right. like 2,000 bucks a month commuting in with parking. And that was 15 years ago. I haven't done it since... Oh, eight. Thank God I'm out of New York. But uh, commuting is extremely expensive. Hey, all the subway lines, the commuter commuter railroads, all of them are going bust, too. Yep. Oh, and, and all of the, the bus companies that, that yeah. have gone on. You know, so now let's think, oh, you talk about the subways. How about how about a night in Calcutta? Uh, the all right. Boy. That's what the subways are like. So now. Let's say I'm a guy that has 10 stories in one of the buildings. They say, listen, stay home. Come in two days a week. I don't need all this office space. I'll save myself a lot of money. You're going to see a banking crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before, that no one is talking about. Because they don't want to freak the people out. Because they want them to keep playing the markets on the street. And they want to keep thinking that everything's going to be okay. So that's one of the big busts that are going to happen. And again, we had said 
when interest rates went way up, no, there's not going to be a real estate crisis in the housing market because the people that are buying the houses now are very different than when back in the 2000s when yeah. you had these things called subprime mortgages. Hey, you don't have a job? Liar you don't loans. have any money? You're bro broke? You're deep in debt? Don't worry about it. Here, sign over here. Ninja loans. I'm a bankster gangster. And if when we go bust, don't worry about it. We're too big to fail to bail us out. Exactly. So, so that's one trend, obviously, the banking bust, the real yep. estate bust. But these cities basically serve no function any longer, Gerald. No. They were cultural centers, trade centers, and now people can't wait to get out of them. Yep. Cultural centers. You know, I'm a big jazz fan. I love the old yeah. stuff. And, you know, you listen to these these cats, you know, singing about the Savoy boy, you know, yeah. the Savoy up in Harlem. Strumming the Apollo the up in there. Harlem. You know, the 40, 42nd Street, you know, bump, bump, bump. Yeah. You know, and, and one song after another, jazz places all over, hot no more, all gone. Now it's one bad rap. Everything is crap. <laughs> Again, the filthy streets. Oh, but yeah. by the way, don't worry about it. We got to send more money to keep to keep the military industrial complex going, keep the wars going as the country rots in front of our eyes. As yep. homeless fill the streets, migrants are everywhere, and crime is 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 just another day of life. Look, before the COVID war. Mm. They weren't locking up stuff in CVS and Walgreens because people were stealing everything. Yeah. They weren't breaking into Nord Stream and gangs of people and stealing stuff. This is all mm -hmm. very new. And it's against, it all happened because of the COVID war. The damage the COVID war has been caused is incalculable. And not only in the United States, particularly in the country that started it on that celebration oh. of the Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat China. Look at their They're collapsing. They're collapsing before our very eyes. I mean, Gerald, did I, I have a question for you? You know, you watch these videos, tofu dreg construction. You familiar with that term? Like everything in China is literally falling apart. Sometimes days after it's finished. Did you have any idea that that was taking place there? No. No. I mean. But <laughs> No, so they're the ones that launched the COVID war and three years of zero COVID policy. They destroyed mm -hmm. the lives and livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people. Yes, they did. And we get reports terrible. from people in China that are saying how terrible things are. So now let's go back. You look at China's GDP numbers from like 1970 to 2001. They were like this. Mm -hmm. Then that slime ball, murderous piece of crap, Bill Clinton, who got every time he got caught with his pants down, it's bombs away over Baghdad. Let's <laughs> let's do the Yugoslav war yeah. one after another. He brought China. Not only did he give us uh what was that one where we took our jobs, uh NAFTA, where yeah. they stole our jobs and brought them to cheap labor in China. He brought China into the World Trade Organization. Yeah. When China came into the World Trade Organization, 2001 to, to 2019, before the COVID war, their GDP skyrocketing. They overbuilt the place like when there's all booms you overbuild because like, everybody uh, wants to make money. Right. So now it was overbuilt before and now the COVID war. Locking it down. They are in a real estate bust, the likes of which have never been seen in modern history. It was way overbuilt to begin with. And then the COVID war made a bad situation worse. Again, in the Trends Journal, we only put in the data. Mm -hmm. Look at China's export numbers. Foof, going way down. Look at China's import numbers. Boop going way down. Look at their manufacturing numbers going way down. Oh, not only in China, in Europe, in the United States, yeah. PMI manufacturing numbers, the PPI manufacturing numbers, PMI numbers are all down. So that means they're building, producing less, 
which means consumers are going to buy less. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, well, uh, that's what they want, evidently. So what yeah. about this thing of like paring down the population? Is that real? I don't know. Uh, but again, you know, you look at the population, look at the numbers, okay? Let's go back 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. There were basically 2 billion people on the planet. A mm -hmm. hundred years later, you got 8 billion. Is that a lot of people or what? Yeah, sounds unsustainable. It is. You know, my one of my books, what well, Zizi gave Honey Boy, Zizi's the Italian name for auntie, Zia is auntie. <laughs> Zizi's Honey Boy, uh, Zizi is uh, auntie. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And she used to say to me, may she rest in peace, Gerald, there are too many people on the planet. <laughs> there yep. are. I mean, so I mean, so what does China have? You look at China again, you look at their numbers. They got 1.4 billion people. Mm -hmm. They need more people. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't think it was done for that. I think it's done for power and control. Yeah. I tend to agree with you, but I don't think they'd mind this. But population declines. Like now we know China had a hundred million less people. Than they said, which further increased the overbuilding uh, oh, yeah. know, crash. So declining populations aren't good either, right? Well, no, they're not good for the economy, you know. But again, it, it this thing is going to go down big. We're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna be facing a economic crisis the likes of which have never been seen in modern history. And again, look at what they years. did again during the COVID war. Yeah. The market should have crashed. For sure. The economy should have crashed. No, no. Screw you. Here we got it. We got a deal over here. We're going to give you zero interest rates. Borrow anything that you want. What could go wrong? Yeah. And we're going to pump in trillions and trillions of dollars. Stay home. Don't worry about it. Here's money. Yeah. I mean, you can't make this crap up. So they created this bubble. What is the American debt now? Almost thirty-four trillion dollars. That's what they admit to, but I think we agree it's probably a lot higher. Not even That's right. including unfunded mandates, right? That's we don't right. even know. Yeah, the numbers. Some of the numbers are as high as two hundred trillion. Yeah, we have yeah. no idea. Right. So, so how are they going to? They're not going to pay it off. So here's the where we're saying, and we've been saying this for a while now: gold. Gold and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. gold, gold, it's very simple. This isn't rocket science. The only reason gold prices didn't go up higher is because interest rates went up very high and the dollar got strong. Mm -hmm. As they lower interest rates, which we had forecast going back a year, that they're going to lower interest rates in 2024. They right. do it all the time in the run-up to the presidential reality show. <laughs> or because they want to keep show. that's all it is it's a reality show look at nikki haley mickey mouse donald <laughs> duck i mean look at the clowns running yeah it's a clown now, show. yeah so who is our treasury secretary janet yellen yeah what was the last job fed oh head of the federal reserve hey, wait a minute <laughs> yeah the head of the federal reserve is our treasury secretary Okay. Would imagine. <laughs> yeah. So they're running the country because they're running the money and yeah. they're going to keep it in power. So they're going to lower interest rates. The lower interest rates go, the lower the dollar falls. The lower the dollar falls, the higher gold and Bitcoin prices go up. Mm -hmm. That's the way we see it. So which is better? Which is a better buy for the future, Bitcoin or gold? Bitcoin's a gamble, but the prices we think are going to go up uh, higher in terms of percentage wise than mm -hmm. gold. So I buy Again, some every if, Monday. What's I buy, that? I buy some Bitcoin a little bit every Monday. Good for you. Yeah. And yeah. I've been doing that for a while. I sold some off, but I always go back in. You know, if I see a trading opportunity, sell it off, then come back in buying the same amount every uh, every Monday and uh, increasing the buys over time, you know? 
you look what's if Bitcoin wasn't around, gold prices would be double their price. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. And they go take a place like Argentina where you have uh, inflation at 140 percent. Mm -hmm. People are buying Bitcoin. They're not buying gold. They're buying Bitcoin. They can buy, like you said, they buy a little bit at a time. They don't want to lose their yeah. currency. So they're buying Bitcoin. And that's going on around the world. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we see killing Bitcoin is if the governments kill it. Right. They could theoretically do it too. Yep. They could do it because they can shut down those nodes. People yeah. tell me, no, they can't. But look, they could do it. Would, it would be a worldwide concerted effort to shut down every. Bitcoin node. And then if you couldn't get a price on Bitcoin for even 48 hours, I used to say 72, but I think if there was no trading in Bitcoin for 48, that would be the end of it. Yep. No, it would really hurt it. So anyway, gold is out to me. And I don't get, we don't give financial advice in the trends journal. Sure. Uh, but we tell you what in the world is going on and what's going to go on. Yeah. And we, all we, 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 we give what is being reported mm -hmm. so you know we're not skewing it. And then we get yeah. our trends analysis and trend forecasts. So mm -hmm. to me, three things, gold, Bitcoin, and real estate. On the real, going back to the real estate market, we said that when interest rates go up, there's not going to be a commercial, there's going to be a commercial real estate crash, but not a residential crash. Again, Agreed. because- it's different than what happened with the panic of 08 when subprime mortgages. Uh, they're Something, still selling yes, it here in Florida, too. It's excuse me? Selling. Real estate is still going, even with the high rates. Yep. It's still selling in Florida. So prices may come down a little bit when, when mortgage rates go down and there's more supply, but it's not going to be a crash. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a time, we don't think the time is right now, to buy real estate again. Right. And so real estate is a long play. And those are our three things. And then now we have to look at what's going on in the, in the consumer market. And you're looking at holiday sales. They're not going to be strong. Mm -hmm. And after the new year, we believe that the markets are going to go down again. As a matter of fact, we believe they're going to go down in December as well. So no Christmas uh, bull, huh? No. No, Santa Claus market? Happening. No Santa Claus market? We don't see it happening, no. And again, you, you it, we have these uh, other things going on called the Middle East, one of our top trends, 2023. So for everybody to look at, yep. we called it at the remember. beginning of the year, Middle East meltdown. Mm -hmm. We said this was going to, people forget what was going on over there. And uh, this guy Netanyahu, by the way, his popularity rating is like in single digits. Yeah. And and uh, they, there were 39 weeks of protests going on before Hamas did this attack going on over there. 39 weeks of people, yeah. Israelis, taking to the streets mm -hmm. against, Ob uh, against Obama, against Netanyahu's Judicial Reform right. Act. Yeah, I remember. Right? And they supposedly knew about this attack for a, over a year. It That's looks right. like Pearl Harbor, you know, and terrorism. Again, we said it, when all else fails, they take you to war. Mm -hmm. So they let it happen, and now they took the country to war. And uh, by the way, he, uh, Netanyahu is being brought up on those corruption charges, too, that they're back right. in court. <laughs> you know, it's a crime syndicate that's running countries around the world. The government is a crime syndicate. Yeah, they're murderers and thieves. Yeah, yeah and that's the good ones. <laughs> yeah. The other ones are really bad. <laughs> uh, so gold, Bitcoin, residential real estate uh, location is important. You want to be yeah. out of heavily urbanized areas, obviously. But exurbs, suburbs, rural, is that the markets you look yep. for? Absolutely. And, and again, as this war mentality keeps increasing, more and more people are going to want to get out of the cities. Yeah. And and so the big cities are going to go bust. And by the way, they are already. <laughs> they are already. And now they got a lot of let ta lot less tax revenue coming in.
because of all the vacancies and occupancy rates going way down. So, so you're going to see crime rates increase. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be terrible. It's going to Again, be dystopian. Yep. Mad Max. So, well, I guess you could look and say one good thing the Supreme Court did, it isn't, it's still a work in progress, is uh, reinforcing, reaffirming the Second Amendment. Um, because it looks like we're going to need it more than ever coming up. Well, there's GCs, G three Gs. Yeah, guns, God, and guns, gold, gold and a getaway plan. <laughs> Four Gs. Don't don't forget God, because uh, yeah. he's part of the plan. Yeah. But, well, uh, well, they, well, they get away. You know, they, uh, <laughs> you'll be getting away again. I love these ads that they run, and they keep putting what to do in case there's a nuclear attack. How about bend over and kiss your ass yeah. goodbye? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, you want to live after a nuclear war? <laughs> that bottle you've been holding for a special event, it's time. <laughs> because you're not going to get the opportunity to drink it again. Right? <laughs> well, you know, like your attitude, I'm detecting from you, Gerald, is like you were fighting this and fighting it, and now there's a bit of resignation here. Yeah, well, you know, I launched Occupy Peace. I do everything I can. You know, I don't just talk about it. I put my money mm -hmm. where my heart is, and I'm very concerned about what's going on. And um, if this war escalates in Israel and they get Iran, Lebanon, and Syria into it, that's the beginning of the end. By the way, oil prices, as we're talking, Brent crude dropping $75 a barrel. I know. WTI is at 70 Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. If if this war escalates, you're going to see oil prices go to like $130 a barrel. Kiss the economies and equity oh. markets goodbye. $100 a barrel oil is guaranteed major recession global because yep. the world cannot run on $100 a barrel oil at this point. Nope. It, it leads to immediate contraction, immediate layoffs because costs just go way too high. Well, at least uh, one good thing, you know, I don't think the urbanization trend was really a very positive trend. It was in the earlier part of the, uh, you know, 20th century up yep. to the middle. But then urbanization went amok. It yep. ran amok. And it's been a destructive force, not just in the United States, but globally in yep. many countries. So de-urbanization might very well be one of the good things to come out of this, Gerald. You're 100 percent right, and you, 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 you. The numbers that you said, the dates are perfect. Again, you're what you're a guy that grew up in Brooklyn, right? Oh, well, in New Jersey, but my heart Jersey. was always in New York. Well, anyway, you know, New York was a cool place. Yeah, and then and all these other cities, and then they put up these stupid, ugly buildings, overbuilt. Mm -hmm. took out all the glamour, all the beauty, putting up this ugly steel and 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 glass crap. And by yeah. the way, all the politicians that are spewing out the BS that, well, we're going to turn these empty buildings into apartments. You, you can't. They're full of baloney. You, you can't, can't do it. The buildings built in the last 50 years are non-convertible. No, absolutely cannot. But the earlier ones, like I was in a building on uh, downtown – and that got converted, and it, they were magnificent, the units, yep. because the elevator, the distance from the elevator core uh, kind of determines the uh, ability to convert. You know, when I, I think, and we both remember this, when they tore down Penn Station yep. in New York City, I think that was the end of cities globally, um, yep. because there was just no respect for the past, and... Everything became disposable for the right price. And, you know, it just was never the same after that, New York. Oh, oh. And look at the look at it. Look at look at the train system. I, I just went down to Philadelphia, took the Amtrak. What a joke. Amtrash. Yeah, Amtrash. Well, well put. You'd go to Europe, you go to China, you go to Japan. Foo, foo, foo. Hey, in, in, Florida. in Florida, we just got the bright line. It's not quite high speed rail, but the trains are immaculate. The stations are immaculate. You could eat off the floor in any bathroom in that terminal. Literally, Gerald, it's it's magnificent. And you see what it could have been. 
Yeah. If the government now we got wars to fight and people to kill. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Keep your priorities straight, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we know you got other uh, other commitments here. We always appreciate your presence here. Trendsjournal.com. Go there. Link in the show notes. Question for Gerald or myself, shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Gerald, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you again soon. And thank you for all that you do. I very much appreciate your, your, your passion, your knowledge, your wisdom, and your caring for America. Thank you for having me and, on. And you 10 times more. You got a couple of years on me, but probably 10 times more wisdom. Appreciate everything you do as well. Thank you.